Good Tuesday morning. I hope you are having a beautiful day. It is seemingly fall-like weather, although we are only maybe three-fourths of the way through August. So we'll see if this weather bounces back or just continues to be amazingly beautiful. I'm going to share with you this morning a devotion. I oftentimes... Um, well, I love to read my daily devotions, and this is one of the books that I use sometimes. It's Daily Devotions with William Barclay. And one of the things that I have found with daily devotions, I read from various different devotional books, is that I may not always agree with the viewpoint of the person who composed the devotion. I may not necessarily um, come from the same stance in interpreting the Bible as they do. But what I can also receive is a new view of something or a different way of interpreting or, oh my, I hadn't even considered when Jesus was teaching that lesson. It's almost as though the sermons that we receive on Sunday morning from Scott and Jennifer and Lori, I'm just receiving an itty bitty teeny tiny one in the mornings as I read from different viewpoints regarding interpretations and applications of the Bible. And sometimes it's just a great reminder of a lovely lesson that Jesus taught us that I may have forgotten. So the devotion this morning that I'm going to share with you is based off the readings of Romans 12, 3 through 8. One of Paul's favorite thoughts is of the Christian church as a body. The members of the body neither argue with one another, nor envy each other, nor dispute about their relative importance. Each part of the body carries out its own function, however prominent or however humbly unseen that function may be. It was Paul's conviction that the Christian church should be like that. Each member has a task to do, and it is only when all contribute to the help of their own tasks that the body of the church functions as it ought. Beneath this passage lay some very important rules for life, according to Barclay. First of all, it urges us to know ourselves. One of the basic commandments of the Greek wise men was, know yourself. We do not get very far in this world until we know what we can and what we cannot do. An honest assessment of our own capabilities, without conceit and without false modesty, is one of the first essential essentials as a useful life. And how interesting is that? We so often try to push ourselves to the extreme or hold ourselves to a standard of someone else when really, truly, we must just look at ourselves and be honest with ourselves most be helpful and beneficial, but not overdue, so that we can still remain healthy enough to be beneficial, beneficial and useful. Second, according to Barclay, it urges us to accept ourselves and to use the gift God has given us. We are not to envy someone else's gifts and regret that some other gift has not been given to us. We are to accept ourselves just as we are, and use the gift we have. Even if we find that the contribution we have to offer will be unseen, without praise, without prominence, we must make it certain that it is essential and that without it in the world, the church cannot be what they are meant to be. We are all specifically created with our own special gifts, and we must use them the way that they were given to us. The fourth, according to Barclay, is whatever gift we have, we must use it. And the motive of use must be not our personal prestige, but the conviction that it is at one and the same time our duty and our privilege to make our own contribution to the common good. 
Now, when I often hear the story of Paul discussing how the church is one body, I love that thought that it takes us all to work together. I'm so often telling my friends, um, it takes a village. It takes a village to raise children. It takes a village to be an adult. It takes a village to support one another. And I feel it is the very, very same in our churches. We are essential to one another. We all have God-given gifts that are so very, very different. And when we can come together and lovingly support one another, those gifts benefit each other and help us just continue to grow and flourish. Just as though a flower cannot just grow itself. It has to have the soil. It has to have the nutrients in the soil. It has to have the water. Some have to be pruned. They cannot be as beautiful as they are intended to be if they don't have the support of the soil and the nutrients and the water and all the other things that help it, the pollination, the bees, the butterflies, just as though we cannot be healthy and successful and joyful if we are not utilizing our gifts to the benefit of others and allowing others to use theirs to the benefit of our well-being. I hope that as we go through this week, we can all remember we don't need to have the gift of someone else. We need to utilize the gift that was given us so that we, as a church family, as a community, may all come together and operate as that one body. Have a beautiful week, and I will see you back next Tuesday.